everyone, welcome back to Static Cardiology here on EMTV. I'll be giving you an ECG rhythm and a scenario. On the bottom of the screen, you'll see a timer for 1 minute and 30 seconds. This time is there because it closely matches the average amount of time you should be spending on each card during an actual National Registry exam. When the time is up, I'll be giving you an answer as well as a treatment. Good luck. 3, 2, 1. So for this one, you've got a very straightforward scenario for, for some people, a tricky 12 lead. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it and see if we can't maybe examine and identify this rhythm. Right off the bat, first thing you're probably realizing is how fast this, this rate is in this particular 12 lead. Now remember, we're looking at 10 second strip here. So unless your base six math is really good, first thing you wanna do is maybe cut this into a six second strip. So what we'll do is we'll take the first two groupings here. Each one of these equals 2.5 seconds. We're looking at five seconds total here. Then we'll add five large boxes and we'll have our six second strip. Now that we've got our six second strip, we can begin counting the QRS complexes and get our rate. So I'm getting 15 and a half, so we'll call this 155 BPM. Now to identify the rhythm, what I'll first look at here is the R to R interval. You'll notice that the R to R interval is completely inconsistent. And there doesn't seem to be any real semblance of a pattern. There's larger gaps here, much down back to smaller gaps, etc., etc. So there's not really a, a pattern here that we can kind of uh, pull out of this. There's only one kind of condition that creates an irregularly irregular pattern, and this condition is fibrillation. Now, there's only two places in the heart that fibrillation can occur. The ventricle, which produces our lethal ventricular fibrillation, and there's nowhere to conduct further south along the conduction pathway or along the conduction system than the ventricle. So we've, we're left with these big, chunky, unorganized ventricular waves. The other place in the heart that can fibrillate is the atria. The atria, the action, is a lot like the ventricles, We've just got a lot of chaotic focuses firing all at once, and every once in a while something conducts further down in the conduction pathway. Because you have a conduction pathway that is distal to the atria, this is why we get conducted QRS complexes. So without examining this any further, I'm going to tell you right off the bat that this is atrial fibrillation. The rate is significant though, so I could add that this is atrial fibrillation with RVR or rapid ventricular response or rapid ventricular rate. I know lead two is kind of ugly looking. This is like an RSR prime or like a fragmented QRS complex that's going on here. This may be indicative of some underlying old infarct tissue or scar tissue along the ventricle there. This could also be the early stages of like a um, incomplete bundle branch block or a other 
interceptal or internodal uh, conduction delay. Let's go ahead and quickly take a look at the lead groupings now and see if we can't find anything more significant. In my anterior leads, leads V1 through V4, I'm not seeing anything that's jumping out at me except a widened QRS, slightly widened QRS, which may be indicative again of a conduction delay that's pre-existing. I'm also seeing a little bit of ST segment depression here, but this may be rate related. Generally, once you get the rate under control, the depression resolves itself. The rate usually is going so fast that it's impacting coronary circulation and causing a mild ischemia. And this can be true in any variety of tachydysrhythmia, not just rapid AFib. Let's go ahead and now look at the inferior leads. For your inferior leads, nothing generally acute here. Again, just that uh, that widened QRS there, uh, the notch there, which may be indicative of a conduction delay of some sort, and that super fragmented or um, almost RSR prime type of uh, pattern in lead two, but really nothing to write home about here. Let's move on now to the lateral leads. Our lateral leads are offering us no additional information. So let's go ahead and take a look at the scenario and determine whether or not this patient is stable or unstable. So we're dispatched to a private residence for 49-year-old complaining of palpitations. The patient is alert and oriented and she denies any pain or shortness of breath. We find that this entire scenario began shortly after taking an over-the-counter flu medication. Pulses are strong, but irregular, and all vital signs are stable. Now remember, for static cardiology, most of your points come from correctly treating your rhythm, not just identifying it. So in order to correctly treat the rhythm, you have to determine whether or not the patient is stable or unstable, and then follow that algorithm or that side of the ACLS algorithm. When making the determination if a patient is stable or unstable, I use the acronym CHAD. And this, of course, stands for cardiac insufficiency, hypotension, altered mental status, and dyspnea. Based on my patient's current presentation, as well as the stable vital signs, my final diagnosis for static cardiology is going to be a stable atrial fibrillation with RVR, or a stable rapid AFib. Now let's look at the treatment. Now, just like with all other static cardiology cards, treatment here will begin by reciting the mantra, scene safe, BSI, IVO2 monitor. Because this is a stable atrial fibrillation, most of the time pre-hospitally we won't touch this and we'll simply allow them to figure this out at the hospital. But because we are teaching ACLS and we are going through ACLS algorithms, we do have to mention some things. My drug of choice here for this atrial tachydysrhythmia is going to be diltiazem. The dose here is going to be 0.25 to 0.35 mg per kg, and this is given as an IV push, slow IV push, and you can follow that up with an infusion of 5 mg per hour. Other medications here would involve beta blockers such as metoprolol, atenolol, labetalol, propranolol, etc., etc. Last thing I would do is perhaps administer some IV fluids, and then of course, rapid transport. That's it. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more static cardiology. And remember, you can create your own custom playlist using my cards to create decks to allow you to study for your actual national registry exams. Until I see you next, have a good rest of your night.